For the first half of the chapter, we've dealt a lot with finding missing angle measures. In fact, we had eight tools that we used for doing so. Um, in the last section, we talked about slope. We started talking about the other part of polygons, of, of shapes, and that would be the side lengths. Um, for the second half of the chapter, we're going to deal with this concept of congruence. Um, how do we uh, move objects around to tell different things about them? Um, how do we uh, use, uh, use the fact that we have uh, polygons that are the same shape to find missing measurements? We've done, kind of done something like this before uh, with similar figures. Um, but f for right now, and remember with similar figures, we set up proportions and use those. Um, congruence is a little bit easier. When I have two objects that are congruent, essentially what we're saying is that they have the same size and shape. Go ahead and write that down. And the way that we do these um, is that we form these through transformations. Um, we form them through translations, rotations, or reflections. Those are the three types of transformations. We're going to learn more about those tomorrow. Um, but just a quick uh, caps capsule of what that means. A translation, uh, your word for that is a slide. So we just slide it from one spot to the next. A rotation is when we turn it, and a reflection is when you look in a mirror, you just flip it around. Um, this can be easy to spot, like if you look at our two triangles here, JKL and J prime, K prime, L prime. Notice this is just a translation that forms these two equal angles or these two equal triangles, um, it can be a little bit more difficult. If I flip and slide, and if it's more complex than a triangle, um, a lot of times we need some, uh, some statement or, or something uh, that tells us how these shapes relate to themselves. To do that, we use what we call a congruence statement. Basically, what a congruence statement does is it tells us how these things match up. It's like our guide that says this angle with this angle this angle with this angle. So notice here, if I have J matches with J prime, they each have a single arc. K matches with K prime. L matches with L prime. You notice K prime and K both have, uh, looks like triple arcs, and L and L prime both have double arcs. Um, so we know that those are similar. Um, notice the side lengths here are the same as well. So we have the two things that make up, make up shapes are the lengths of the sides and the angles that separate them. So we have JL is congruent to J prime L prime, LK is congruent to L prime K prime, and JK is congruent to J prime K prime. If I put all of that together, I get the congruence statement. Basically what I do is I name the triangle here. I name triangle JKL is congruent, that little equal sign with the squiggly, it means congruent. It's congruent to J prime K prime L prime. And notice Right here, I have my side lengths in the statement. Notice JK, the first two letters are congruent to the first two letters over here. All the angles match up. Look at JL, you'll notice that J is the first letter, L is the last letter. It also matches up with J prime, L prime. So we put the letters together in such a way in our congruent statement so that if one angle matches with the other angle, they're both in the same position. J and J prime are both in the first position. K and K prime are both in the second position. L and L prime are both in the last position. Um, so, I, you know, so here I'm just going to highlight that. Okay, J and J prime, K and K prime are in yellow here. L and L prime. Everything matches up. So the congruent statements tell us, tells us not only what angles are congruent, but what side lengths are congruent based on what letters are next to each other. So here's how we do this. Let's look at four examples here. First thing we need to do is pick one of the, the uh, thing, one of the shapes, the one on the left usually, and just name it. So I'm going to call this A, B, C. Notice we go from, from point A to point B to point C. You could do A, C, B, um, B, C, A, whatever. Notice A matches with A prime. So since I wrote A first, I'm going to write A prime first. If I wrote B second, I'm going to write B prime second. And C last, I'm going to write C prime. This is about as easy as it gets. It's just a translation, nothing fancy here. If we go to number two, though, notice it's a little bit more complex than just a translation. Uh, what we have here, we have a quadrilateral. Let's go ahead and name this. Be careful when you name something that has more than, uh, more than three points. I'm going to go W x, u, v. Be careful here because notice there is a line segment in between each of the letters I'm writing. If I go w, x, v, u, or x, notice x, v, if I write them next to each other, I'm saying there's a segment that connects them. 
So if I go W, X, V, U, that's not the quadrilateral here. So you can get these wrong if you do them in the wrong order. All right, so now all I have to do, once I name it properly, I have to go figure out which one matches with W. I could have started with any of these four letters. I chose to start with W. Since I started with W, I'm going to write T next because it has three arcs. Notice X has four arcs, so that matches with H on the other one. And then I want W, X, U is next with one arc, M is next with the other one. Notice I already went T to H, so I know I'm going up to M, and the last one is A. Notice this could be done any, any number of different ways. If I switch the order, though, the order on the second one changes as well. So let's say instead of going uh, W, X, U, V, uh, what if I want a slightly different order? Um, what if I want U, V, W, X? Notice I still have, it's still a legal way to name it. Well, if I U, want U, V, W, X, this would end up being quadrilateral math because you go from one arc to two arcs to three arcs to four arcs. Or if I switch around again, um, if I move X to the first position, so when X, U, V, W, notice all I'm doing is I'm shuffling the letters through. Um, notice X is in this, uh, matches with H, so it's in the second position. Okay, notice H, M, A, T. Um, so there's lots of different ways I can get this, and all I'm doing when I do this, I can do it very quickly because I'm looking at the position of the letters in the first statement I wrote. So W, X, V, U, if X is second, it matches with H, because H is second. So I can just restart my other quadrilateral with that letter there. Um, all right, going ahead and looking at uh, the next one, these two trapezoids down here. I have, uh, well, let's see, how should we name this? I'm going to call this quad, let's go BJLT. For this, again, look at the measurement of the angles. You're guaranteed to get it wrong if you don't look at the measurements. Notice B is 108 degrees. I have two options for starting with 108. I can start with K or I can start with P. If I start with P, it's like I'm treating this as a, as a rotation. If I start with, uh, with K, I'm treating it as a reflection. I go from 108 to 72 to 72 to 108. So this is going to be K, D, Y, P. Again, other ways you could have done that. Uh, but that's just the way we chose to do it. So there are other correct answers here. This next one is a hexagon. Um, one thing you want to do when you have so many points is start with a, a point that's very recognizable. For me, it's easy for me to spot uh, angle B because notice angle T has that right angle as well. And then I'm just going to go, uh, I'm going to go counterclockwise, B, A, F, E, D, C. I know B matches with T. So they both have that 90 degree symbol there. A is 140, so now I need to figure out what matches with 140. That's V. T, V, and now I know I'm going to the right, so I'll go T, V, W, X, Y, Z, all the way around. And you'll notice these match up. I could have gone A, B, C, D, E, F. That would have been V, T, Z, Y, X, W. Very, very quick way for me to check. Um, there's lots of different ways I could have started this. So let's say I started with E, D, C, B, A, B, A, F. Notice I'm going those last three letters. The last three letters on the other one are X, Y, Z, and then go to T, V, W. So once you have the first one written, it's very easy to match them up and figure out different congruence statements. Um, you're going to try this, writing congruence statements, and then we'll watch the next clip is going to be on um, how do we use these to find missing angle measurements once we know what the congruent statement is.